Hello. This video is provided to help you in understanding and selecting the IBP supply planning algorithm that fits best to your business requirements. We can say there are two ways of generating supply plans in IBP. Heuristic and optimizer. Heuristic is a calculation of needed supplies with taking into account various parameters. And optimizer is a complex mathematical procedure to estimate the supply quantities that meet best predefined constraints and cost factors. As you could see on the slides, we have two types of heuristics in IBP, infinite and supply propagation, and two basic optimizer modes, delivery maximization mode and profit maximization mode. First, let's see the supply chain used in this demonstration. We have only one product sold to one customer from two distribution centers. Each distribution center is supplied by a separate plant and they supply the only customer in predefined proportions, 80 to 20 percent. To view and analyze supply planning situation, we can define appropriate planning views. Here, in order to achieve maximum clarity, they are rather simplified and there is separate planning view for each stage of supply planning calculations. First, we have a planning view allowing to see sales demand at customer level. Next planning view displays demand received at distribution centers level. Another one allows to view demand at manufacturing plants level. In this planning view, I can display production plan and plant consumption of components. Here is the planning view for capacity planning. Please note that plant capacity was entered manually. In next planning views, I can see plant receipts at distribution centers level and at customer level. Now I'm back at my customer demand planning view. I start my planning from receiving demand plan, which you can see here. When I have received demand for my customers, I can run my supply planning algorithm. It can be executed here in background or here interactively in a simulation mode. And I'm executing infinite heuristic right now. We have results almost immediately. Now you can see how the customer's demand was assigned to supplying DCs. In the following planning view it is shown how customer demand received at DC level is assigned to the plant level. All demand in coming to a location is used for calculating net demand. In our example, plant stocks are equal to zero, so net demand is equal to received demand. Then, newly calculated net demand is assigned to supplying plants. And here is the result of the same calculation at production plant level. Net demand from this stage is assigned to production source. Explanation. Production source is a master data object that corresponds to production version or PDS in SAP APO. Basing on such calculations, production plan is generated. It is visible here in production receipts key figure. I can check plant receipts at distribution centers in the next planning view. Please note that there is a key figure named deficit that shows unfulfilled demand. In our example, initial stock is zero 
so we have deficit for first one or two periods. This is due to lead time between plants and disease. And here are plant receipts at customer location and plant capacity usage. Let's see what happens when I block production at plant 101 for two periods. I do this by entering zeros to adjusted production key figure. Then, after saving my changes, I can run infinite heuristic again. And here is the result. No production plant and no capacity consumption for the two periods. But situation at the distribution centers remains unchanged. Plant receipts are the same as they were before. They are also the same on customer level. This is a feature of infinite heuristic. It is assuming that there are infinite supplies available. This heuristic is useful in many business situations when available supply capacity normally exceeds demand. But when missing supply situation occurs frequently, you may consider using supply propagation heuristic, which I am running right now. First thing you can notice is that this heuristic has not planned production for the current period. This is because it takes into account components availability. As it takes one period to receive components from suppliers, production was planned only as of second period. Now we can check what changed at DC level. I have more deficits in the initial periods because production start was delayed and I have deficit in the two periods when production was stopped. Missing supply situation is propagated to the customer level which explains the name of the heuristic, supply propagation. On the same playing view, we can see that due to production stop at one plant, part of the customer demand is not fulfilled. But in the capacity planning view, I can see that at another production plant, I still have free available capacity. The reason for this situation is following. Heuristics cannot assign other sources of supply and if production in plant 101 is blocked, heuristics cannot plan production at plant 102 instead. Another important fact about heuristics is that they are ignoring capacity constraints. If I reduce plant capacity like here and rerun heuristic, my supply plan will not be changed. When we want to automatically adjust supply routes or to be consistent with available production capacity, then we should use RBP optimizer. The optimizer can be executed in two modes, profit maximization mode and delivery maximization mode. The delivery maximization mode may be a good mode to start with. It can produce results even without filling any cost data. This mode is trying to fulfill demands even if it would generate very high costs. For example, it can be used to check if supply capacity in the whole network is sufficient to cover all expected demands on time. But in most of real-life scenarios, the profit maximization mode will be used. 
This is because it allows not only to maximize demand fulfillment, but helps in avoiding unnecessary costs, like too big storage or transportation costs. On the screenshot here, you can see that the profile for optimizer in profit maximization mode may contain only mode indication and no other parameters. And now I am executing optimizer in this mode. On the customer receipts planning view, you can notice that now customer's demand is fulfilled in a higher degree. In the capacity planning view, you can see that now available capacity at plant 102 is fully utilized. But for some periods, production was planned unnecessarily and capacity is utilized without good reason. This is because this mode did not take into account storage or excess inventory costs. To avoid this kind of suboptimal proposals, we should use optimizer in profit maximization mode. I am executing it right now. Please note that unnecessarily planned production at the end of planning horizon is now removed and the situation on customer level is still OK. This improved result is achieved thanks to additional cost data that can be provided in dedicated IBP key figures. For example, high non-delivery costs are defined to avoid plant out of stocks. There are inventory holding costs to avoid pre-production and high transportation costs are assigned to one of plants, which is giving higher priority to the plant which is located closer. Using optimizer in real business life is not a simple thing. It requires a lot of work on estimating cost parameters and defining constraints. Therefore, please treat this demonstration as introduction, not as a prescription on how to work with optimizer. This video ends at this point. I hope you find it useful in choosing the right IBP's supply planning algorithm. Thank you.